Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. I'm new here, in fact, but I have been always been following up what's happening in this um, Voice Out HLP event. I support each and every one who came down here, taking the effort, your time, everything to come here and listen. I am one of them in Singapore, one of you. I don't want to be unidentified. I am already classified as second class citizen now. Although I know about this event, I hear about this, uh, I follow about this event. I never had an opportunity to come down. With the courage of Gilbert Go, I'm here today. Being a single mother, do my own self-employed job. Not own, found my own job. In fact, I'm an entrepreneur. Because I'm the only one who's this job, who's very rare to get. I found this job myself. I create this job. Where did foreigner create job for Singaporeans? I am the Singaporean. I'm born here. I breathe here. Where did the government say the foreigner gives opportunity for Singaporeans to get job? I created this job. If I could do it, each one of y'all would be doing it maybe from tonight. Or maybe even now your mind start rolling. Right? Yes, because every Singaporean has a unique mind, unique attitude. We have our unique language. Okay? So, here let me start. I am not young. I'm just as above my, let's say, okay, I put it very fairly. I'm not shy to say how young I am. I'm 47. I'm a mother, a single mother, not because my husband has actually got any other issues. He has left me because he cannot stay in the same job who's been snatched by a foreigner. He was paid very high, like a $15,000 per month. He's living luxuriously. Everything my daughter gets, right? Everything is happy, right? Going on smoothly. But what happens when the job was snatched over by a foreigner for 1800 to replace a Singaporean with $15,000? And our, our, my friend, my husband, okay? He cannot accept the mind changes difference. He went into drink. And our friend spoiled his life. And then he couldn't change himself. He cannot find for another job who pays much lesser than 15,000. And he also have these things inside his mind saying that, why did I lose 4,800 job? What did I lack off? And he's a master degree holder. And he has lost a job to a foreigner earning 1,007. Basically because uh, Ministry of Manpower has actually substituted him with a lower. And if you calculate the amount by bringing a foreigner inside, annually, yearly, it will save a bucks for Ministry of Manpower. You got it very clearly. This is what happens to my marriage life. It went down. Not because he's not happy living with me or I'm not happy living with him. Very simple is that, right? Who's the cause of my separation today and being a single mother today? The Singapore for bringing in flushing foreigners into it. Right? And I presume my story may be different from you guys or been replaced by a different foreigners into your position. I'm very sure some of them or maybe 20% of them here been have been replaced by the foreigners here. Right? This is part of my story. I'm just sharing with you. I'm not shy to be sharing what's happening to my life. But I'm saying this because a foreigner has influx, has changed my life. My happy married life paid very highly and luxuriously living on it. And I was forced into this. I am a minister. I worked in many ministries. Name it. Ministry of Defense. After I finished my school, I started with Ministry of Defense. Dempsey Road. That was when I was only 17, you know, and O levels finished. After which, I went to Ministry of Manpower. After which, I went to Subcourt. 
the high court. I deal with arbitration cases with unions. So I learned all these things. After 13 years of serving government sectors, I tried to pull out. Because my mother, my grandmother generation says a government job is always safe. Very secured. How secured it is now? How secured is it safe? If I would have listened to my grandma and my mom and stayed still in the government job, I'll be paid, definitely. Definitely I'll be paid. But I decided not to. I want to learn out of the box. I want to come out out of the box. Not a yes, yes, aha to the ministers. In fact, the no has less letter than a yes. A yes has three letters and a no has two letters. Why can't we keep simply say no? Still, we say yes, yes, yes. Okay? That's it about me. Let me come to the country. A country has to run a country by country. Not as a business. Isn't it Singapore running as a business now? Don't you all realize it? Everything you got to pay. Everything you got to pay. Everything you're supposed to take permit. Not supposed to do that. Not supposed to do this. I ban you from this. I ban you from that. Why? Why do not I have the democratic liberal power as a Singaporean? Why are we having the word democracy in our pledge? When it's of no use. Right? I want each of y'all. I taught my daughter because I'm a single mother. When she was going to P1, she said, Mommy, I got to say, we the citizens of Singapore pledge ourselves democratic as one society. I say, please delete the word democracy and say the rest of the word. <laughs> Mommy, why? I say, sooner or later when you reach uh, 21, you'll be able to know what is the democracy means in Singapore. So don't say it unless you know what's the meaning of it. So our child is actually pledging, Singaporean, they're pledging, and then they're not knowing know what they're actually pledging. So that's what I told my daughter not to say that. Now, she refused to say that. She has actually reached 22, but she still yet don't want to say it because, mommy, there is no democracy. Either it is not been found or is lost, so I'm not going to use it. That's why I'm saying Singapore is becoming a business. A country is not running like a country. Right? Everything we have to pay for it. What is free in Singapore? Please tell me, audience. Come on. Tell me. I don't want more. Just give me four, three, two. Tell me what's free. What's free? Nothing is free. Correct? Okay, let me not divert you, me from so many other things. Uh, let me go. I'm actually supposed to speak about single mother, you know. Okay. Anyway, no surprise that this is a less of struggles to pay our daily, you know, uh, necessities. Okay, let me come. Let me come. It, it's also Singapore has actually become metrocracy. Right? Do you agree? Meritocracy. Yes or no? If you have it, you are successful. If you don't have it, it's your fault. You don't have metro courtesy, your fault. It's not my government fault. It's your fault. So why I don't have metro courtesy? Why I don't have? So question mark, right? I start thinking from today. Okay? The government numerous times has actually assured us. It's not new to you guys actually. It's already been assured many times that they will minimize more foreigners to limit them coming in to Singapore. But are they really following what they assured? They're not. And this, this assurance is not today, you know. It's back then in 2012. Our friend HL, sorry, Lee Sien Lung has said that to minimize and control and limit the influx of foreigners coming in. This is two years down the road. They still not done the job. Still, the dollar signs comes up for them, which is like a business. They want more foreigners to come in. Obviously, right? 
Last. Okay, let me put it. Why Singaporeans have these problems of getting a job, right? Okay. MOM has said, and the parliament has passed saying that, if you want to actually hire a local, a Singaporean, you got to advertise in paper. I'm sure many of you all know this, right? Okay, you advertise in paper. When you advertise in paper, many Singaporeans will come for interview. So do I, you know. Okay, I go for interview. The first thing they ask you, okay, what's your, what's your expectation of salary? What's your expectation of salary? Basically, all will say, I've got responsibility, I've got commitments, and also the living standard, the cost. So I have to calculate all this, then I will say, based on this experience I have, and based on the qualifications I have, I meet all the criteria in the job. So I ask based on that for my expected salary. They said, okay, we will call you after interviewing the rest of them. This is very common, right? Many of them are right. Okay, we will actually go through. There's a few other applicants. We will go through and then we'll come back to you. As usual, right? Then after which, the, the, the whole interview process finish. Right? Finish already, they will put an evaluation report to MOM saying that locals are very choosy, selective, demanding, not flexible. Correct? So as such, we need foreign talents to do this job. Very simple, right? How clever, huh? You see, it's the parliament. Let public know. We are giving the locals opportunity. But Singaporeans are choosing. So we are doing our best. It's a superficial thing, right? Okay, fine. I go for another job interview, right? Okay, they ask me. Okay, not now, lah, not me, lah, but uh, a friend of mine who went for the nurse job. When they went for the job, she was very young. She's only 22. All right, she went for the interview and she just got married, no? After six months married, Resting at home, she went for an interview. The first thing they asked her, when are you giving birth? When are you giving birth? Here the government is encouraging you to increase the population. And here the company is asking when you're giving birth. So what are you telling? In order to hire, you want to pay the benefits. You don't want me to give birth. Lah. Correct? So what should I do? Right? Write to Lee Sin Nong say that, that this company is not allowing me to give birth. Right? So she said that, I don't know, pregnancy can happen anytime. If I have it, I will have it. Oh, you can't you know, get pregnant within the three months because you're on probation. You see? So there it goes again. She's not accommodative to the company policy. She was not selected. So who is choosy here? Who is selective here? Why the government every time say, we Singaporeans are selective, choosy, demanded? No, we are not. 20 years back, who sweeped the floor of Singapore? My forefather, my grandfather. We used to have Malaysians and then our Chinese, our, our, our people, some Indians, some Malays. 20 years ago, in 1980s, I born in Chinatown. I know how it is, right? And now, why our same people are not sweeping the same floor of Singapore? Correct? Now Bangladeshi doing, India doing. China doing, right? Why, uh, why, why, why they are doing our job? Why are they doing the job? They are paid very cheap, right? Who is saving the money here? Huh? Correct. Exactly. Saving the money, right? For who? The government is saving the money for whom? For their pocket. Very true. For whom? For people like us, right? For people, us. They're saving the money. But is this money reaching us? It's not. It's a wash eye egg. You got a, a red eye now, you just go take off tracks and then wash it. That's a moment, that's it, finish. Right? Let's go to another thing. Okay, another thing MOM has actually said. And many people, the different ethnic group, please be, be cautious. I'm not targeting ethnic group here. Please, please, my dear friends, my fellow Singaporeans, I'm not targeting 
ethnic groups here, okay? I please apologize if it is anything misinterpreting, all right? MOM, when we, we, a lot of our Indians actually um, do not have um, the job that they have uh, degreed for, they studied for whatever the job they applied for. When they go for interview, okay, then they write to minister saying that, why we Indians cannot get the job? So the minister, very good, very clever, implemented. What implemented? Last time in papers, I'm sure, straight times, job classified, I say. Chinese preferred. Right? I'm sure you all might have recalled. Chinese preferred. Then, when these complaints all come in, very nice. Our government, choice of words, you know. You know, choice of words, very important, right? So he say, Chinese speaking preferred. How clever, huh? Chinese speaking preferred. Indirectly, it says, that, why couldn't the MOM verify whether this company surely need a Chinese speaking officer or, or some staff to actually do this job? Basically, they just want to ignore the ethnic groups or whatever is the reason. But I'm not here to target on the ethnic group. We're just basically putting it across. What is the government's way of actually twisting and turning their words? Chinese preferred and additional word inside. Huh? Chinese speaking preferred. Well, a lot of difference. Huh? So I start learning Mandarin. Huh? Okay? I start learning Mandarin. Huh? Anyway, I know Mandarin. All right? And this Mandarin is not something that I went, went to classes to learn or anything. My fellow Singaporeans taught me. All right? And then um, we go to the next one. Let's go to single mother. I know many of them is expecting this thing to hear from me. According to the ST survey, all right, it says that it needs 200,000 to 300,000 to raise a child till 20. A 200,000 to 300,000 until he's finished his graduation, right? Such amount is needed. How would you ever imagine a single mother can afford this? Can? Let's supposedly say she's earning less than 1,005. Can she? What if it's one baby? What if it's two kids? What if it's a three child? Can she? 200 to 300,000. We put an average of 200 from the beginning, okay? If it's three child, until 20, what's, a, what's, what's like the amount? Can she afford that? Can't, right? Obviously. Alright? Then, definitely a single mother uh, is actually comes under a widower, a divorcee, a single mother, or she chooses to adopt a child of her choice. Alright? This single mother can fall into any of this criteria. Am I right? Alright. Why this single mother? Our non-constituency um, parliament uh, member, Lina Chiam, have actually asked the government that is the single mother benefits are the same as the married mothers. Say so yes, we have not deprived them. We have not deprived them. Whether they are wed or no wed or widowed or single, their child is a Singaporean, they will still benefit the same as single mother. But single mother, you tell me, do you benefit the same as your mothers? Mother, married mothers, single mothers, do you all? I'm sure you all do not because I did not. I did not. How to get this 200,000 to 300,000? A mother, a single mother to raise a child, one, two, three or whatever. You know how much of emotional courage she needs, enormous. She needs so much in order to bring this child up, apart from this 200,000 or 300,000. She has to work, right? What is the same benefits? What is the same benefits? Tell me. In fact, a single mother and parent are truly major contributor in tangible and untangible ways. Right? A, a child is born. It's a Singaporean. Okay? They have nowhere to go except to go forward. Right? 
So who is to bring them forward in this country? The first person is the mother. But the mother itself cannot move forward. How can bring the child to forward? You tell me how to bring. Cannot bring one. But somehow if she has to bring, right? Okay, fine. So it's the same benefits as the married single mothers. Because the husband divorced or whatever it is, I fall into this category. I'm not a single mother. But I'm a single mother who falls into a divorce thing. All right? I face numerous kind of problems just because my husband is a Singaporean, but a attained Singaporean, not a born Singaporean. So finally, when he couldn't get this much of salary, our friend just flew off. And here me, cannot get him, contact him, whatever it is. I fall into single mother right now because my, pay, my job is not much of a pay that I can bring up my kids. So I went for assistance. My husband has this problem. And they say, oh, your marriage is still valid. A piece of paper says I'm still valid. I'm not eligible. So I didn't get my eligibility for 10 years. Although, my husband is living somewhere in the world just because I couldn't get a divorce. If you have a divorce, you are considered a divorced parent. Under that, you will get your benefit. Otherwise, you won't get your benefits. Very good, right? So I didn't get it. I learned on my own. Many like me, same. Single mothers are suffering like me. How they want to come out is an individual. The government is not going to do much unless we voice out. How much our voice is going to be heard, that's another factor. How effective it is, that is also important. When the child is coming to this world, it's not deciding, you know, I want to land in this country, I want to land in this country. He, the, the child has no choice except to come. So he finally comes. Is this his fault? No, it's for the parents, the one that is, a, is responsible for this kid to be in this world. So the child, why is he being deprived of getting what his right is? Right? He's not supposed, he's supposed to enjoy just like any one of your Singaporeans. I'm born here. Right? And this boy or the girl grown up, let's say we talk about boys, a single parent's boy. He grows up, he votes, he serves national service. So he is contributing his part as a citizen, like just like any one of us, right? Why is he deprived from the time that he's not given what it is? is? And single mother has been actually um, discriminated or or given a partial benefits from the one that is a single mother of a wedlock. Unlock, when unwedlocked mothers do not benefit many, aren't they not going through the same thing as what the single parents is the other one is going through? We are humans the same. Single mothers actually made monumental sacrifices too. Lah. Don't treat them second class citizens, okay? Okay, raising a child as a single parent, okay? Her vote counts too. Her child, when grows up, attain also the vote counts. All these are also into consideration. It's time actually a government should actually do some study. What exactly lacking? What is there to look and give for our single mother or unwed single mothers? What, what they want? They should have more, more um, um, how do I say, more deeper kind of survey rather than a vague, simple survey. All right? For example, sorry, yeah, it's a bit lengthy. Okay. Uh, married mother benefits. Let's talk about mother. About two minutes. Yes. A married mother benefits. Okay? What she's entitled now uh, is a baby bonus, cash, gifts, and child development account. Maternity leave of 16 weeks, parental, parental, sorry, parental tax rebate, qualifying child relief, handicapped child relief, working mothers, grandparents, caregivers relief, housing grounds, family, housing, poverty schemes, and so forth. Okay, a mother giving birth, a married mother got 16 weeks 
maternity leaves, the other mother get eight weeks. So she's not going through the same pain as she's going through when she deliver. Lah. She is carrying her month, uh, uh, 12 months. The married mother carrying the baby nine months. You see the difference? Doesn't a single mother need more time from 16 weeks to actually arrange for her baby need to be caretaken of before she calls off for the work? Then the married mother. Why there's a different shade on a 16 weeks and 18 weeks? Can they explain? Can the government explain what is the difference? A mother is a mother. The child pain is child pain. A child bearing is a child bearing. Why 16 weeks and 8 weeks? Okay? Um, parental, parenthood tax rebate. So single mother no, cannot stay near the parents. La. That's the most they need. The parents need when they're single, when their husband is not there, who they need? The next one is their parents. Their siblings, their parents, somebody who could, the grandparents, they need someone there to guide them, to put them in a safe side before they reach to work. But this relief is not given to them. Housing grant. When you get divorced, single mother, when you get divorced, the house got to be forced to sell, the money goes in, apparently the wife was not working for many years, she don't have sufficient CPF enough to buy a house. Right? And she will be staying on the streets with the kid lah. Single mother, it's not my fault what? You get pregnant, your fault what? This is what the government thinks. They don't get what they're supposed. Are they not reasonably asking or reasonably asking what they are supposed to get? They are reasonably asking, I guess. Why baby bonus? Why one plus one match? First baby, I give you this bonus. Second baby, I give you this bonus. Third baby. How much this bonus is? I'm sure quite a number of them will know how much this bonus, right? But the cost of bringing up a child at 21 is 200,000 to 300,000. Eh? So this bonus is sufficient enough to cover or not? No, right? I would rather tell the government, uh, don't give baby bonus, give dog bonus. Dog bonus better because young married couple nowadays like to have small dogs. Ma. Because the dog survival rate is maximum 15 years. Uh. Never ask you to bring McDonald's. Uh. Never ask you to bring functions. Uh. Correct? No need to bring Chinese New Year dinner. No need to bring Deepawali buy clothes. No need to bring temper. Very simple, right? Very good, right? So better dog bonus, uh, don't baby bonus. Why not the government thing? Same like our CPF has been controlled and put inside. There should be a set aside amount. Oh, there's a monthly contribution in the CPF. A father who is actually divorcing and then the child needs a maintenance charge. Ch the child needs maintenance fees. Why not the government should implement? That's a certain kind of money that he should actually put into the funds of the child, just like the CPF. Until the child reaches at 21. And the government has to match a one-to-one -one on this. So that way, I contribute one, you contribute one. My 200,000 will be achieved. Yes or no? It depends on the pay scale. Yes? If my pay scale is very high, my one-to-one -one match is very high. And I receive monthly from that account to bring my child up. I don't need to depend on MSF. I don't need to depend on CDC. My husband paying the maintenance fee is both mother and the father of the single parenthood thing have to pump in this account CPF as set as I'm for single parents' mother. This amount must be given monthly to them. A one-to-one -one match instead of a baby bonus or one-to-one -one match. I don't want a baby bonus. It's only a few thousand bucks. We talk about 100,000. We are rich, you know. Singaporeans. Singapore is rich, let me tell you this. But Singaporeans are poor. Singaporeans are poor. Singapore is rich. We are proud to live in a very... High society, top six world, but we are poor. That's why today we are standing here and talking. Right? A one-to-one -one match. What the government can't do more for the single parents? Why can't the single parent, if the child is less than six years old, pay bus fare free? 
Why must my child must depend on MSF or the bus voucher? Until the child attains six years old, give the child a free bus ride. Why not? Why not feasible? Lah? Possible. Feasible. Where to get this money? The, the bus hike, ah, the company will tell you. Where to get this much of money? Everybody pay free. Ah. Where to get this money? Foreigner. Lah. You investing while your business is from the foreigner. Ah. So you ask the foreigner to pay double than the Singapore fair price. <laughs> Correct. Why they coming to stay in Singapore? Because tax is so much lower than any other country. Very secure, safety. This is the reason why they are here. Not for the benefit of Singapore. Singapore becomes a port for all these foreigners. Come, earn, go off. When they are 60 years old, they go for the house in their, in their homeland, will be settled, giving up their PR or citizenship here, getting back what they want, and they shake leg at the age of 65. But here, Singaporeans taking plates in McDonald's. So I think I, I need to speak more, but I want to, I wish to, I really love this crowd, I really want to speak more, but if I've got an opportunity again, I will speak. But however, our friend Gilbert is actually pushing me, so I really want to see you guys again. We'll talk again. Thanks for spending time with me and hearing me out. Alright? Please think carefully, wisely, for your children, for your future, for your livelihood, that where you should stand, where your rights are. Don't act for what they talk at that moment or give you at that moment. You have ample time before the election comes to think again and again and again. Recall your past, recall your present and recall your future. Then you will know where you will be standing in the next five years. I thank each and every one for this evening. Bye-bye.